Hey everybody, it's Travis speaking. I thought today we'd take a little bit of a look at Autodesk 3DS Max 2012. It's a great release and uh, there's a lot of great features that you can get with this program. So what we'll do is we'll start up at the top and we'll take it down to the bottom. So similar to uh, most applications you'll see from Autodesk, you have an application menu here and you've got some pretty typical stuff here as far as your file options go. But uh, once you get into referencing and managing different uh, types of content, you can come down here. So when you scroll over these, you see the different settings, the different tools that you can access. And again, you usually have a, an options button here that will take you to an application menu. So clicking to this, this options button, we'll give this a sec. Here you have all your preferences. So you can change up... Uh, you know, the just general tab, you've got file settings uh, for viewports, gamma and LUT, render settings. So there's a lot of different things that you can make changes to in here. So along the top, you have your quick access toolbar and you have your different tabs for your menu options. So you've got create, uh, modifiers, animations, rendering, customization, if you want to change up your user interface a little bit. And so some of these some of these options you'll see over here in the common panel as well. So in the common panel you have a create tab, you've got a modify, hierarchy, motion, display, and utilities. So once you get into these, if you were to make a just a quick box, now you have some geometry. You can see that you've got some different expandable menus here to change some of the parameters of this box and uh, after that's all said and done you can come into the modifiers menu and start making changes in here and if you expand the modifier list you've got a whole bunch of options of uh, different things that you can do to this geometry to make it a little bit more interesting so underneath you have your main toolbar and uh, this is, these are tools that you use to manipulate objects in geometry. Uh, you've got things uh, like your standard select. You have um, an option to pick from a list. So right now we should have uh, just one thing in this list. So it's just a box. That's all we've got in, in the scene. But you also have ways of filtering out different, different items. So if you only wanted to access lights, you could turn this on and turn this off. So we'll cancel out of there. You've got different ways of selecting with the regions. Uh, you've got your, your move, rotate, and scale. And you have ways of toggling your snaps. And you've got some other tools here like your mirror and your align tool. This little tool right here, this brings up your layers. And so once you bring in different objects, you'll start to see them appear on different layers and you can specify this. This is nice for controlling different uh, different elements in your scene. And then over here you have access to the graphite modeling tools which appear underneath the main toolbar as well. And then you have your your curve editor, your schematic view, you've got a materials editor. Now the materials editor you can have in a, in a slate mode or you can bring it back to a uh, traditional compact material editor that a lot of people are used to and uh, this is this is what I learned on was the compact material and so some people might want to use this again you've got some some expanding features here that you can slide up and down and then over here you have your your render tool so you've got a render setup and the rendered frame window and your actual render button so moving down into some of these viewports here, by default you have four def default views and each one of these is set to a uh, wireframe and then in your perspective you've got smooth and highlights. So essentially this is the closest thing uh, that they, they predict to be human eye. But you can set up cameras and make tons of changes. Um, so again, you uh, if you can take a look up here in the corner if you right click on that plus sign you can make changes and and maximize this viewport uh, you can get view cube options so there's different uh, different view options here you can go in and change which view this is so if you wanted to change it from top to bottom you could do that as well or you can change it to a camera view once you get those set up 
You also have the option of changing the visual style up in the, uh, the left hand corner so you could change this to smooth and highlights or have this as hidden line and then there's some the other visual styles as well that you can use. So again you have a, a view cube which is becoming pretty standard now in Autodesk software and if you right click on the view cube you can bring up more options and so if you take a look below these these viewports you can see that there are uh, this is your animation slider so once you've set up some animations if we wanted to move this object to the far corner of our grid we can set up a keyframe and then once we play through our animation you would actually see that change position uh, so right now it's set to have uh, 100 frames but you can make changes to that in your your animation settings and Underneath that, you see there's some uh, some status bar controls, and these will give you prompts and tell you kind of what's going on with your process. And you also have some fields for X, Y, Z coordinates uh, when you're doing transformations. And over here, you have your animation tools. These set keyframes, and you have different functions, different options. You have key filters, and then you have a, a way of playing through by hitting these next buttons or you could just hit the play and it'll it'll play through your animation as you have it and finally you also have some tools over here in the far bottom right hand corner that uh, control your view so right now we have this perspective view and this is this is the view that's selected as you can see with the yellow border so if we hit this tool right here it will actually maximize that perspective view. So I use this toggle a little more frequently than these toggles up here. So you also have the option of uh, changing your field of view. You can pan around, which I just do with the wheel mouse. And you can actually use a, a free orbit as well to change the, the position of your view. And so you've got also got some zoom options in here. Zoom all, uh, zoom extents, zoom region, and so essentially that's the user interface. There's lots to look at, there's lots to do with this program, but uh, we're going to look at that in some later videos once we get started with creating geometry and setting up animations. Thanks for watching.